Right, Coach Dixon here. We're going to get ready for the biological approach. I'm going to channel my high school American college football. Shout out Coach Mayo. We're going to get into it. Ready? Biological approach coming up. I'm going to say a word. You write the definition. Hit pause. We'll check the answers at the end. We'll see if you're ready. Ready? Right, what's one technique used to study the brain? Write one down. Don't worry about defining it. Just make sure you can give me an example. Localization of function, what does it mean? Hit pause, write the definition. Neuroplasticity, go. Now what about these three? Can you define neural network, neural pruning, and a neuron? These could be SAQ only terms. Neurotransmitter, what is a neurotransmitter? Pause, write the definition. Similarly, with neurotransmission, do you know the difference between an agonist and an antagonist? Maybe you can diagram it. Be great to put a diagram in a short answer question asking about these. With a synapse, do you know uh, inhibitory and excitatory. Now for the SAQs, you only have to know one or the other, inhibitory or excitatory. What is a hormone, right? Pause, define. Define a pheromone. Even better, do you know a putative human pheromone? Can you give me an example of one? Genes and their behavior. Do you know a specific gene and how it affects behavior? Now, hopefully the IB won't ask for one gene on behavior, but there's nothing to say that they might not, except for the historical trends are that they won't, but give at least one example of a behavior that's, that you know is influenced by genetics. Twin and kinship studies, what are they? And finally, what is an evolutionary explanation of behavior? To find it, give me an example. Okay, did we get through everything there? I think we did, right? These are all the possible SAQ questions. Techniques to study the brain, localization, neuroplasticity, neural network, neural pruning, neurons, neurotransmitters, synapses, either excitatory or inhibitory, antagonists and agonists, one of each. Hormones, pheromones, genes, genetic similarities, and evolutionary explanations of behavior. They are all the possible SAQ topics. If you can uh, define what those things are, in most cases explain how and why they affect behavior, or for the techniques and genetic similarities, explain how and why they're used to study behavior. Give an example study, you're doing great to be on track for your SAQs. Essays, go for two or three studies, add some critical thinking, you're well prepared. All right, let's check your answers. Hopefully techniques to study the brain, you did some sort of technological technique like fMRI, MRI, PET, or CT scans. Localization of function, hopefully you wrote something like the idea that different parts of the brain perform different functions. Neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change as a result of experience. So neural networks, hopefully you wrote down something like a series of connected neurons that allows the processing and transmitting information. And neural pruning, more commonly known as synaptic synaptic pruning. It's when synaptic connections in a neural network are lost because they're not used. A neuron is a type of cell that receives, processes, and transmits information through electrical and chemical signals. Now, I don't know how they're gonna ask a question about a neuron, but if you can diagram one, it'd be a great start. In fact, that's my advice for all of these neurotransmitter topics. Neurons, synaptic uh, pruning, neural networks, excitatory, inhibitory transmitters, agonists, antagonists, being able to draw diagrams, it's really helpful. A hormone is a chemical messenger that's transported through the bloodstream, and a pheromone is a chemical messenger that's sent from one animal uh, and has an effect on a different animal, usually of the same species. So it's still a chemical, but we release them, uh, they're released and they affect a different animal, right? Whereas hormones affect the organism which they're traveling in. Now for pheromones, we do have chemicals like androstenone and androstadienone, but these are putative human pheromones, meaning they're reported to be, but we're not really sure. There's no identified uh, human pheromones. What does that mean? Well, we know we release these chemicals in our sweat, right? I'm probably releasing a lot of androstenone right now, but I don't know that that's going to, you know, go and make my wife more attracted to me, for example, because we don't know that they actually have an effect on someone else, but we do have the chemicals. All right, genes, well, that's just a sequence of DNA. Genetic twin and kinship studies is the use of twins and related individuals to study uh, human behavior. Evolutionary explanation of behavior means explaining a behavior in a way that shows how that behavior helps us to survive, procreate, or pass on our genes. And I think I got all of it. Hopefully, uh, you know what those key terms are. Now you're going to be ready for your exams. Good luck. Coming up next, the cognitive approach.